Sure jumps. <laughs> hey, what is happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode. It's going to be a fun show tonight uh, uh, of the quality comedy time with me, Quincy. I am your host. Thank y'all once again for tuning in. Give everybody some time to come in. It's going to be a lot of fun. And what I need y'all to do right now, because Facebook loves to play these algorithm games. So if you're tuning in right now, all you got to do is hit your share button, share to your page so other people can know. I give away some cash prizes and no one won the cash uh, prize for the trivia question that I asked last week. So now I got two of those that I'll be doing on this show instead of just one. So uh, uh, somebody or maybe two different people will win uh, $25 in cash prizes. So I think I got my brother back. Uh, he's been working a lot of overtime, so it's dope to have him back on the show, uh, running the pr production side for me so I can focus on the hosting and all that stuff. Uh, about three or four hours ago, I visited my dentist to get a filling done on the back, on the back tooth that I chipped about eight months ago. And they could not find how to, I mean, not, not that they couldn't find it, but they it took a while before I couldn't feel anything because she would try to numb it and... And then she would go, and I start shaking. So that's what I've been dealing with. And um, but they finally got it. But now the numbness has wore off because I was so afraid I would be talking to you guys, and my lip would just be turned over here, and I'd be like, Ooh. "You'd be like, what is wrong with this dude? He's, is he stroking?" <laughs> so no, nope, not stroking out. Uh, but uh, yes, the numbness just went away. But I got this pain in my jaw from when she was uh, putting the Novocaine in there. So shout out to Dr. Krista Woodlock out there at South Beach Dentistry in Virginia Beach for taking care of. And I don't have any pain. I just got the soreness in my jaw. So she she said she was going to tune in and, and see if I was drooling everywhere. That's very disrespectful, by the way. Let's go ahead and bring this interesting guest that I got on, that I got on this week. But before I do, as always, you guys, check this clip out. Uh, you know, I went to a Mexican church one time. You know, they have church just like a black church. Uh -huh. Because Jesus will, he will make you wait somehow. <laughs> I mean, you don't hear me. <laughs> if you don't get right with God, Tom Joyner. I'm trying to tell you, oh, 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 like you say, oh, 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 it's the Tom Joyner morning show. He spoke in tongue too, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, this guy, a uh, very, very talented, uh, you know, impersonation guy, you know, um, impressionist is what they call him. But uh, tonight's guest, legendary comedy vet uh, with classic performances on hit shows like HBO's Def Jam, uh, uh, BT's Comic View. He is a master impressionist um, and he can do voices to a T uh, of some of your favorite musicians and celebrities here. Uh, he is known as the human iPod, welcome to the show, Jammin' Jay Lamont. Welcome to the show, Jay. What's up, Quincy Carr, my man, my brother, <laughs> the, the car, baby. You should call your show The Car. <laughs> Look, <laughs> you, you know what? I can call it The Car, but... Uh -huh. You know, I put together uh, the intro to the show, right? And I'm sure yeah. you caught the in intro. Now, would you give me a different type of intro, some little music or something? You know, I don't, let me see, let me see. Here come the car, here come the car, Quincy car, here come the car. Here That's come the good. car, here uh -oh. come the car, a Quincy car, here come the car. He's yelling to drive, it. he's riding down the street. He's gonna be driving, I don't know, something like that, something like that. <laughs> Hey, you, you know what? I appreciate it because it sounds like that's some stuff from the seventies, and you definitely know your. Now 70s. you know you're wrong for that. Now that wasn't that wasn't no seventies. I see. Here, here he go. Here he go. I, I, I act like I got somebody right here. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> hey, COVID, COVID has turned us into like you know talking to ourselves, bro. Because you out there in LA where the fires are going on right now, and and y'all are a hot state right Brother. now as far as COVID. Let me tell you something. You know, like my father, and I think we've talked about this a long time ago. I've known you for a couple of years. My yeah. father used to always say, boy, it pays you to live right. He said, you see how hot it is outside? Boy, there is a place that's three times hotter than, boy, I don't want to go there. Man, it's hell out here. It's hell out here. I, I, I'm sitting right here in the coolest of my air conditioner. I keep it on all night. Sometimes my air conditioner gets sick in time. I'm like, it's some air conditioner, like, dang. Oh my God, as soon as you turn it off, dang, you know. 
Yeah, it's it's you you know um, I've visited out there in LA a couple of times, and yeah. each time that I've gone, I've always gone during the springtime. Yeah. And yeah. what was uh, uh, cool about being out there is the weather during the day could be nice, like right. eighty degrees, yeah. Oh, yeah. but at night it drops down to a brisk sixty. So Man, it, that's how I'm it surprised is. a lot of people ain't sick. I tell a lot of my friends, Quincy, anytime you come to California, anywhere in California, bring a jacket with you. It could be a, yeah. it, like like where I am right now. It's it's like I say, what's it like the last time I checked? It's it's seventy nine degrees outside. Beautiful. Now before yeah. now the day before it's like one hundred thirty thousand degrees, yeah. but it's now it's seventy nine. But like fifty miles north up in the mountains, it'll be thirty five degrees cold. Yeah, it's crazy, man. <laughs> it's like you'll yeah. see all four seasons in California. Yes, yes, and I thought yeah. I thought it was just here in the state of Virginia. And speaking of Virginia, yeah. man, uh, so many people were looking forward to seeing you again. I think Alvin Kills is probably tuned in, and Jerry Horn is uh, maybe tuned in as well. Yeah. But they have their annual Jazz Legacy, um, you know, right. big event. The, the big fundraiser, and it's been postponed to next year. But man, people were looking yeah. forward to seeing you again, bro. I don't believe that. I think you were told. I think someone told you to say that. I think the people <laughs> at Jazz Legacy, I think Alvin, and let, let me just say shout out to Alvin and Gene. I love those guys. I love them. And I appreciate them for having me come the last couple of years. And then I had a chance to meet you and we bonded like brothers. Oh, uh, yeah. But I, I think they're sick of me, uh, Quincy. They're sick of me. I think that you were told to write that down. I'm sure they probably, they probably paid you. Did you get a little some money under the table? I ain't got no money. Hey, look at I ain't like, got no money. Here. Alvin probably said, look, here's $5. Just tell Jay, tell Jay that we hate that he's not coming. Just let him know that. And I want you to grin. Smile at him. Uh, smile at him, uh, Quincy. <laughs> Man, look, every time you every time you come down, you kill. I mean, like, so so your, your background as far as um, as an entertainer is mm -hmm. you open up and you, you know, MC and host and perform on concert type shows where it's yeah. like musically, you know, connected. And you have the audience rolling with with these impersonators. Like my best one, which blew my mind. Um, uh oh, uh -oh. what's that? Anita, Anita Baker, bro. Can you do that one real quick? <clears throat> A Anita Baker. Let me get my keyboard. And I hope she doesn't see this because I've opened for Anita. <laughs> hey, 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 Anita, say Quincy. Quen, 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 say, quen, say, quen, see, Yo, she, she had this thing, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. She had that. <laughs> what what's what's his name again? Quen, 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 see, car. She says, quen, 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 see, car. <laughs> man look you can do like a female voice i've seen you do uh uh, uh michael mcdonald and i thought i had i thought i could do a michael mcdonald right i thought whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, say it with a friend, friend, friend. that's all i know no that's good no that's good right there <laughs> whir, yeah. whir, 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 whir. <laughs> that's you know, it that's that's Michael, man. And, and you know, and you know what's so funny? People always say, man, why are you doing Michael like that? I said, no, because I am a fan. These people that I that I uh you know try to imitate, these are people that I grew up listening to. I, I love. I mean, I'm a huge Michael McDonald fan because I mm -hmm. I came I grew up in the time when Michael McDonald was with the Doobie Brothers. So if anybody yeah. out there watching knows Doobie Brothers, you know, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, before you even get into it. Yeah. Anybody that know the Doobie Brothers in the seventies and Michael McDonald, they also know that scene from uh, uh, "What's Happening" when uh, <laughs> when old boy dropped dropped the cassette at the Doobie see, Brothers concert. See, I see, see, Quincy, I knew I liked you for a reason. I said, "Hey, what I'm you know school. about that? What you know about that?" Oh man, Ray was, Ron was jumping around with the trench yeah. coat. Yeah, and that was tape that was. A <laughs> yeah, and remember the brother that tried to set rerun up. Remember that was the same brother that played Sweet Daddy in Good Times. Yeah, he said, "Now look at brother. Now look at now. What did I tell you to do? Now you gonna press this button? Now what you gonna do? You gonna press that button, brother? Yep. You know, brother, I don't play. That's that's Sweet Daddy. I said that's Sweet Daddy from Good Times. JJ yep. Quincy, call my man, Quincy. Boy, you in trouble. <laughs> that was. <laughs> I, that, that was him. That, he had the you know same what? character every that, show. That brother, as a matter of fact, just so people know, that that brother, his name was Teddy Wilson. 
actor. He was a phenomenal actor. He's been on many, many series, but people remember him from Sweet Daddy. But I remember he was on What's Happening. Because, you know, he's he's done a couple of other episodes of What's Happening. Remember uh -huh. the one where Raj, Dwayne, and Rerun went to this office and they were talk, uh, uh I think what happened was Raj's mom uh, had misplaced a ring that belonged to this lady she was working for. Yeah. And, and and Teddy Wilson was there. And so the white guy had said something to rerun and, and Raj really, you know, he was talking loud to him. So, yeah. so Teddy said, hey, look here, brother. I know you're not talking to the brother like that, are you? Are you talking, are you talking down to the brother? <laughs> He always had those same those yeah. same mannerisms, man. Yeah. But back to your back to your yeah. Michael your the Michael McDonald brother. impression. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no worry. Hey, hey, watch, watch the Quincy. Hey, 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 Michael, say Quincy. Quincy, Quincy, Carter. <laughs> you know, one of the most soulful brothers until, uh, oh. I mean, we went through a period of soulful brothers. It was him, then it was, you know, uh, John B. Uh, oh. <laughs> after John B. Uh, Man. Pretty much a uh, Robin Thicke, and then that was it. That was uh... Let, well, let's not forget. Remember, remember Bobby Caldwell. Bobby, no, Caldwell. I don't. You don't no. know who that is. Oh, no. not now. I'm not now. I'm ashamed of you now. This yeah, one, I don't know Bobby. You Caldwell. Remember, you remember? No, no. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make you know him. Remember the song "What You Won't Do for Love." Sing it. I guess you wonder where I've been. Oh my God! Yes, yes. Okay. You know, you know that's a you know that's a <laughs> white dude. A lot, but you know what, Quincy? I thought it was a brother. A lot of, a lot of, to this day, to this day, a lot of black people did not know that's a white dude. His I didn't name know was, it till just now. Yeah, his name is Bobby Caldwell. I searched to find the love within. And you know, there was a song that Common sampled. There are times when you <laughs> need someone. I, yeah. That yes. was Bobby Caldwell. Get I love out. by your side. There is the light. That shines. Yo, yep. I had no idea that that was a, so, okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so in between uh, 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 yeah. Michael McDonald and John B, it was Bobby McDonald, right? Uh, no, Bobby McDonald. <laughs> no, Hold Bobby, on. Bobby, Bobby Caldwell. Look, Bobby see, I'm Caldwell. Messing with everybody up. Bobby I Caldwell. Know, as a matter of fact, I see a few people come and they say, "Yeah, that's right." Tell him, Jay. Tell him, Jay. Somebody said, "Tell him, Jay." Bobby Caldwell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then Bobby, John B, and then uh, Robin Thicke. And then Robin yeah, Thicke kind of lost everybody. Yeah. After he lost Paula. <laughs> oh man! Oh, that's so sad. That's a oh. What? What she find? You know what? Let, let us pray about that. Follow God. <laughs> he knows he was wrong, Lord. He was wrong for letting Paula because she was fine. Okay, but anyway. Yeah. 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 Paula. Paula was a beautiful lady, man. Oh, but gorgeous, hey, man. you 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 know like certain like when, when it comes to R and B. First, mm -hmm. but you know what? Skip, skip the whole thing with the RB. What, what you do with your talent and your mouth? I need, I need people to check out. Like, like sound wise, you can mimic any type of instrument or any voice. Like, check this out, y'all. So I'm like. Just tune the guitar, that's all. He coming back. And it was Michael. So I looked at him, I said, what you want me to do? He was like, what should I do? Uh, uh, let it go. Do we go? Absolutely amazing, Jay. Like, what is it about your ability to just mimic? I mean, like, you mimic like a, 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 a an electric guitar, bro. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where'd you get all those clips, man? Hey, look, don't worry about that. Look, uh, uh, it's, well, called, it's called I, screen record. I know I looked in the mailbox. I didn't see a check in there, but <laughs> Lord have mercy, because I forgot about that clip. And you got the one, I think the one I did on Tom Jordan. That was, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Man. No, but that like, guitar, the guitar really was when um I don't know if you remember the uh Jimmy you ever you, you ever heard, you've heard of Jimi Hendrix. You remember Jimi Hendrix? Okay, first of all, stop disrespecting me. I've heard of Jimmy. I didn't know no, the Caldwell dude. Oh no, no, you're Jimmy not about Hendrix. to go there. I'm about to tell you, I'm about to trade you the piece. You didn't know who Bobby <laughs> Caldwell was, but no, no, I'm messing. But no, that's why I said a lot, lot of black people did not know that that was a white dude singing that song, but yeah. uh but no, the guitar man actually was, um, I was a little kid, man. You know, people when people ask me, 
when did you know you could start doing those sounds? You know, but I was a kid, man, listening to the radio. When I would ride around with my mom, when my mom would go shopping, I'd be in the car listening to the radio, just mimicking certain sounds. Yeah. So I remember one night I was at home, my mom was cooking dinner, and there was a movie that came on. Uh, it was like a, it was a concert film about Woodstock. I'd never heard of this. And I yeah. remember seeing this brother, this this black dude walking out on stage with a bandana, had an afro, and he had a, a Fender Stratocaster guitar, and he starts playing the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah. Now, I'm like 10, 11 years old, mesmerized. I said, I never heard this. And I'm sitting there watching. And so I start just... <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, you know, and he, look, and he looked like he was high. You know, you know, and, and you know, I'm ten. I'm ten, Quincy. I thought I was high. I didn't know what high meant back then. <laughs> See that little sound? That's like he, I realized later on. That's like he's plugged into a fuzz box. <laughs> that is and amazing, so, man. That you can do that. So I started listening to other groups. Like uh, I was listening to like. Um, Slave, Cameo, every group that had a guitar a yeah. soloist. Uh, Isley Brothers, of course, like you mentioned, Ernie Isley, you know, that was one of my favorites. And who would have thought that I would I would get a chance to meet Ernie Isley a couple of years back? I was yeah. backstage in his dress room. A friend of mine who I did not know worked with the Isleys took me backstage and I did the guitar for him. And yeah. it was amazing just to watch his reaction. He didn't know what to say. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, that is crazy. I did that poem. See, that's that fuzz, that fuzz tone. And then you, get, you can't forget Prince. You know, don't lie. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 let, let me turn no, that down. Let me turn that down. Prince. Okay. Prince. <laughs> Prince had two spectrums of his voice. Like Prince can oh. hit that at first, and then he'll oh, hit man. you with the Dilly Beloved. Right, right. <laughs> Dilly Beloved, love it, love it, love it. No, you gotta do like this, Quincy. Dilly Beloved. We are gathered here today to talk about Quincy Cock. And then all of a sudden, you know, Dad, I was so low. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no love of cash to hang around. And then Purple Rain, Purple Rain. <laughs> Wow. Okay, hey, Prince, Prince, say Quincy. 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 Okay, that's uh, Jay, I don't want I don't want Prince calling my name like that you know, at all. You know what? Okay. You know what? Shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strike, strike that from the records. Strike yeah, that. just go ahead and just erase that last <laughs> part. Oh, Prince, call it. Wait, wait, hold, hold on, Quincy. What you say? Oh, you already paid him. Okay, he said he paid you some money, so you should you should accept it. Accept yeah, it. yeah. That's that. That's that. That's that hush money. <laughs> right. Because right. we ain't heard from him in a minute. Yeah. Now. Don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 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 with your ability to do all that, what is very impressive with your uh, impersonations of sound and also people is you've got dope uh, comedic impersonation uh, impressionists like Frank Caliendo, uh, Ari Spears, yes. Dean yes. Edwards, uh, even the young Jay Farrell who's from right here in the seven five seven, Avion Crockett. Like yeah, yeah, like so. Yeah. So what are the only um, well, my question, I'm sorry, I messed my own stuff up. This will happen when you have a TCC education. I'm, I'm reading double lines. Look. I said, what, what could you drink it over there? Put that, put that glass, put, put it to the side. I meant I to ask, it. what's the difference between them just impersonating, uh, you know, like people and you doing the music and you doing the instruments? And in your opinion, which is the tougher skill set to have? You know what? It, it, I think it varies, man. It, I think it's just from, from that individual. Every name you just mentioned, man, they are just amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Jay Farrell. You talk about Jay Farrell, man. I love him. Um, Aerie Spears. I remember I did a show. I think I did a show one time where somebody made the mistake. And, I mean, and I'm saying it just like that. Somebody made the mistake of putting both of, both of us on the same show. 
and mm-hmm. it kind of it kind of got to the point where we he and I had to talk. We had to go backstage and talk about okay, what is it that you're going to do? Because we didn't want to be it, it didn't want to be a situation. Who was this? In, uh, Aries Spears. Okay, Aries yeah. Spears. Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't want to be in a situation where I might do something that he may be trying to do. You know, we don't want to come come across being combative. Okay, well, he does something that I do. I do something that he does. Because that sometimes that can cause a conflict of interest, and you know. Yeah. So it was a situation of why would you know even even he said the same thing. He said, "Man, I love what you do, but I don't know why they would put us on the same show." It was a it was a huge mistake because Aries is good at what he does, you know. Yeah. Oh, I, and uh, can't forget about Michael Winslow. That's the one yeah. person that I've always been compared to. It's so funny, Quincy. I even to this day I've had people walk up to me who thought I was who thought I was Michael Winslow. Per, m- mainly white, something. mostly white people. White people, you know, yeah. they don't they think we look the same. We look Clearly. the same. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Jay. I worked with Michael Winslow uh, years ago. I think I made it was sometime with, within the first five years of my comedy careers at the Comedy Zone. And when mm-hmm. I tell you this brother is on all the time, and for those of you that don't know, Michael Winslow is the brother from Police Academy that made right. all the sound effects. Right. So right. Michael, <laughs> I I was hosting the show, and I'm trying to bring him up. He would oh, be you backstage. Show, yes, he oh, would cool. be backstage. Uh, well, not back, but he, 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 look, he would be in the audience with his sound effects, little box thing, yeah. making fart noises, making all types of helicopter sounds, what? just to mess with me. And I'm like, uh, what is going on? And it was him. Like, he Are is on all the time. Yes, but he's brilliant, oh, wow. brilliant with the sound effects. Oh, see, that's amazing. I wish, I see, I've never seen his show. And what's uh, interesting, he knows about me because what's funny, um, my brother, I have a brother who works at a TV station in Texas, and mm-hmm. Michael Winslow was it was in town, I uh, can't remember where, and and came to their station, and he mm-hmm. mentioned my name to Michael. Michael's like, oh man, I love him, I love him. So that really that really made me feel good that Michael Winslow is like he loves Jay Lamont, but right. I wish I could see his show. But people have said, well, Jay Michael does what he does, but you do what you do. You know, so everybody is different. There's variations of what everybody does. Now, for me, what I do, and, and I don't know if you, I don't know if I told you this, but I'm I have a musical background. Right. My background really is music. So I started out singing. I, I actually I used to be in an R&B band way before I got into comedy. So okay. what what happened was the group that I was singing with these are these this consisted of classmates I went to school with in college. Mm-hmm. And we were trying to get a record deal. We had recorded some demos. Uh, you know, I was the lead singer. And of course, things things didn't work out like we thought. You know, sometimes you know, you know, there's always that one person you thought that was going to try to help you out, and now you can't even find them nowhere. Right. Well, that's what that's what happened to us. And so there was some there was a couple of folks at the time said, "Man, you know what? You ought to give comedy a try, Jay. You know, you're funny. You know how to joke with folks and stuff like that." So I said, "Well, you know what? I might just do that." So I started. I did a couple of contests, you know, around where I grew up at. And mm-hmm. so one of the guys in the band said to me, "He said, you know what you ought to do, Jay." I tell you what you need to do, you know, since you, you know what, give that comedy a try, but show everything that you do, bring that musical stuff, bring your musical talent into the comedy so they can yeah. see what you really all about. And I said, yeah, you're right. You're right. And the first gig, the first professional gig that I was on Quincy, it was not a comedy show. It was a concert. Like you said, I've done a lot of concerts. So my first show was with, you're going to laugh when I tell you this. Grandmaster Melly Mel from Grandmaster Flash and the Furious. Wow. Family. Before he got swole? Oh, way before that. Way before. <laughs> you know, you know, he had already did. And a lot, and a lot of people don't know that uh if you remember Shaka Khan's I Feel For You, yeah. That's that's Grandmaster Melly Mel doing that rap. Shaka 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 Khan, Shaka right. Khan. Yeah. Right. So that song was already out at the time. I was I was still in college and I was I was his opening act. So that mm-hmm. was my first experience as a professional. You know, I think I got two hundred dollars at the time, which I would at that time was a million dollars to me. I, I had never made that much money at one time. I was working at a restaurant at the time. I, yeah. I called the boss, said, "Look here, uh, I'm gone." Okay, I'm gone. You, okay, then. yeah, that's what I said. I'm gone. Yeah, but uh, but man, I've just been excited ever since. Never could have imagined that I'd be doing it. But but I had already I had always said that I'm gonna do the comedy. But I'm gonna go back to go back to my music and work on that, you know, pick up where mm-hmm. I left off at the time. So, but well, uh, never, never could have imagined this would be happening. Well, well, what's the difference between you know a master impressionist like yourself and your good friend Willie Brown, who's a ventriloquist? Oh man, another great friend that I love, and I know you worked with him too. Uh, shout out to Willie Brown, and see, see, Willie is like I think I put him in in the category of like what I do. Uh, people have always said that my type of act is very different, very unique. Well, just like him, 
He's very different, very unique. And what's good about it, Willie is one of the top, probably one of the most top ventriloquists in, in the country as an African-American. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think he told me at the time that his biggest influence was, if you remember, Willie Tyler and Lester, because we had a, uh, uh, a gentleman, Willie Tyler and Lester, um, who was uh, like the biggest, the biggest uh, African-American ventriloquist of all time. I remember watching him on sh like Carol Burnett, the Flip Wilson show. He had been on all yeah. the shows. And who would have thought that one day that I would be opening up for Willie Tyler and Lester? You know, mm. uh, we were, yeah. I think we were in Memphis, Tennessee. And and what's funny is that when I first met Willie, Willie and I did a show. We co-headlined a show together in Chicago mm -hmm. years back. And we have been great friends ever since. So I love Willie Brown. I mean, that's just like, I think I think what, what's what's really happening, Quincy, and I've never said this. I think what's missing now is a, that, that that uniqueness in, in, in black entertainment. Mm -hmm. You don't, how many brothers do you see doing what Willie does? You know, yeah. and people have said to me, man, there's not many brothers I've seen, Jay, that do what you do. You know, no, it's not. And, and you know, and, and needless to say, and I hate to say it, but the hate is out there. You can imagine the hate that we go through because yeah. of what we do. And I hate to have to say it, but I'm just keeping it real. There is so much <laughs> hate out there from my own people. Oh, what is yeah. he doing on this show? All he does is do them sounds and stuff like that. But, but yeah. the, the great feeling is that I have people, you got people over here who will say, man, don't worry about them. And, uh, uh, you know, there may be certain words they may say in within what they tell me, man, blank them, keep doing right. what you're doing. You know, I've had people say, Jay, if they could do half of what you're doing, I bet you they'll get up on stage and do it, too. You know, absolutely. So, now, now, real quick, how would Barry White uh, address <laughs> the haters? See, I need that big microphone. I need that mic with an amplifier. You know, you know how he always has that little music background. See, yeah. he's got to talk. See, Barry talks for a minute before he sings. Now, just so now, Quincy, I'm not saying this to you. I don't talk to men like this, but for the for the ladies that's watching, for the ladies, if Barry had to go off on somebody, you know what? Can you hear that? You know what? What's up, Barry? What you gonna do? You know what? We need to take this outside. <laughs> you know, my ladies out there right now, my lady's sitting in the car, but I can whoop yo right now. And then all of a sudden, well, well, <laughs> we can go outside. Well, well, that's, that's Barry. Well, well, we can go outside. I'm going to kick you. See, don't, don't worry, Quincy. I got the three second delay. I'm going to kick you. We can go outside. <laughs> that, that, no, that would be. Me. <laughs> that would be man hilarious to see Barry White, the late great Barry White. But that, like, I've never seen a spin. <laughs> Wait, but I gotta, I gotta do that quick. I'm going to kick you. <laughs> I never, I never seen a spin on Barry White uh, being so upset. <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 Quincy, Quincy, you know what? I got yeah. something I'm gonna send to you later tonight. Remind me. Do you know there's an audio? I don't know if you know this, but there's a, there's an audio of Barry White. Yeah. He was cut, trying to cut a commercial, and he kept messing up. He kept messing up to the point where he just lost it. Man, I I, I couldn't stop laughing, but I said Barry White was going off. He said, "Who the who the?" <laughs> I know, I know I can't sit on here, boy. I'm gonna send it to you. You gonna be like, "Oh my God, that's Barry White." You know what? The only thing uh, I mean, like with Barry White, I remember. I think. And it was released in '94. Uh, you keep telling me, oh. telling me, like when that hit, <laughs> it was like that this was brother is serious. <laughs> oh yeah, no, notice how he said that that first that first bass line. <laughs> right. So, what do you want to do? <laughs> it's like it's like it's like it's like Quincy. You looking at your woman? I'm here, baby. I'm ready, baby. I got you. You know who wrote that song? That was I think uh, Gerald Levert wrote that. Wrote and wrote really? That. Yeah, that's Gerald Levert's production. Wow. Girl, that's that's something wrong, wrong I, with I, me. I, I, I can see Barry, Barry sound like he drunk. Girl, <laughs> there's something wrong with me. And your your woman. First like, of all, like, hold like, up. Hold you. <laughs> anytime, anytime a person starts off with letting yeah. you know that they got a flaw, you might want right. to let them know that you, you you know what you won this argument. Right, hey, right. I'm telling you, I'm crazy. There's something wrong with me. All right, right. you won. Right. 
Because notice he says, you keep telling me this and telling me that. You say there's a lot to them now. See, that's his way of letting her know. You know, I'm getting sick of you. You just get on my case. So he, that was the clever way of saying, you telling me this and you say, right. you say right. there's a lot and you have to go back. Yeah. Right. And then on the flip side, you got somebody like Patty LaBelle. Patty LaBelle makes the patty pies. Yeah. Uh, she just boosting black people's uh, uh, blood sugar level Ooh, <laughs> through man, the roof. Patty. That patty. But Patty, Patty can blow. I mean, when it come to singing, and 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 the most interesting thing about you is you you don't just do male voices. You don't just do black. Uh, 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 you, you know, popular male voice like you do black female voices and female like, female. yeah, like your Patty LaBelle. Like, can you do you have it here to hit that at Patty? Let me see. I like you. Like you, honey, I I'm not saying that to you. Like you, like you more than you ever know. It's for sure. You can always count on my land forever more. Here it comes, here it comes, Quizzy. Here it is. How you How I love that you do love you. Are you ready? Here it comes. Here we go. Wait, one, one moment, one moment. <laughs> let, us, let, us, let us pray. Father God, we come to thee. Okay. Hey, <laughs> you know I did that for her. Oh, really? I met Patty LaBelle on the top Jonah Cruise. 10 years ago, never forget it. And she was yeah. there and I did that for her. She just looked at me. Oh, she was so impressed. She said, no, you did. She put her hands on her hip. Do it again. Right. She said, do it again. Hey, yeah. Oh my gosh. She <laughs> fell in love with me. She fell in love. I was like, yeah, because she wanted to take me on the road with her at the time. Because she looked yeah. at her manager and said, get his info. I want him on the road with me. Yeah. yeah. So I, I went yeah. before a few times, so it was cool. No, man. Uh, I mean, I mean, as you can see, the people that are tuning in, uh, you know, I just very impressed with what you're doing and it's like i said like you're extremely extremely gifted and talented now um we, we reached the halfway point in the show let's let's do this thing that i like to do with my guests called going completely off topic are you ready for that man let's go off topic let's go and, and let's go going, time. going completely off topic this has nothing to do with the rest of the show but I just like to break things up right before uh, we reach the halfway point. I shout out my sponsors and then we come back and finish the second half. Now, uh, I have three questions going completely off topic. Uh, the first question is uh, your granny's sweet potato pie or a hot Krispy Kreme donut. Which one do you choose? Wow. Well, you know what? I grew up on sweet potato pie. So I got to go with Granny Sweet Potato Pie. Second, like I said, make, make me want to speak in tongue. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, that sweet potato pie is no joke. Uh, but that hot Krispy Kreme donut when that light is on, brother. Uh, and I, I don't and know. Don't get me wrong. I love Krispy Kreme, but I can't mess with that. Boy, you talk about diabetes. Can't mess with that pie. Diabetes, diabetes, and diabetes. Lord. Okay. All right. So, so that's a little, that's a soft question there. Now here's a, it's going to get a little bit tougher for you. Um, <clears throat> how would Don Cornelius oh. introduce President Obama if he was a musician? Now everybody who know Don Cornelius from Soul Train, Don had this, this, charism this charismatic way of just <laughs> introducing anybody. But let's say Obama was a performer. He just finished his performance or, or right before he performs and Don Cornelius is getting ready to introduce. Okay, I got my, it's my microphone. This is my, my, my cable, my cable remote. I'm gonna use it as my microphone. Did you grow up watching Soul Train Quincy? Oh, yes, sir. Man, that was the show. That was the show. I remember Saturday Don, mornings, bro. Saturday morning, and we're so glad to have you here on the show. First, let me just say, I want to thank you. You know, he had a very deep voice. I want to thank Mr. Quincy Carr. Uh, for everything that he's done. I know I, I know this is a habit, Quincy. I have a habit of leaning back like this. But I want to thank <laughs> I want to thank Quincy Carr uh, for letting me do this introduction of the very special man. This man I'm sure we all miss. We truly love. We loved his family. And of course, when you think about who's in that White House right now, we wish that this man was back in that house. 
Let's get some hands together, gang, for a big one that you shouldn't have going to be digging. How about it one time for the one and only Mr. And we still, we will never say the word former. He is still our president, Barack Obama. And did he fall out? <laughs> after he introduced somebody, you're like, let me get uh, back we'll up. We're right back after this. Let me do it one more time. <laughs> he just fall out. And, and so, so, so Obama just finishes performing and Don Cornelius interviews him. You you know after they finish performing, oh, Cornelius yeah. comes up on the stage. Yeah. Oh, you know, see, that's why I love you, Quincy. This see, Quincy, know the show. Because you know, Don, Don, you know, he's real timid. And we're so glad to have you here. We want to thank uh, Barack Obama, of course. Uh, for all those of you that don't know, um, your beautiful <laughs> wife Michelle is from Chicago, just as well as myself. Tell us uh, how you got started. Well, um, when I first started, uh, Michelle, <laughs> Michelle inspired me. She told me that I should go out on stage and do my thing, do my do. And well, we appreciate you for coming on the Soul Train. Of course, we'd like for you to come back and do another song for us. Is that okay? Uh, and play, maybe the next time out of your busy schedule, come on back on the Soul Train. Is all right? I sure would love that, Don. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Soul Train gang and to the Soul Train dancers. And I hope to go down the Soul Train line. Uh, we're going to let you do that uh, right after this. <laughs> this next portion is brought to you part by Johnson Products, makers of Ultra Sheen, Afro Sheen, and Ultra Sheen Cosmetics. You know I got to do that, Quincy. Uh, Afro Sheen, that's right, gang. And also, we got the brand new, we got the brand new Quincy Afro pick. That's when your Afro, you can let your Afro blow out with the blowout kit brought to you in part by Johnson Products. We'll have, we'll have more Soul Train after these important messages. <laughs> This, this dude, man, man, you a dope, man. <laughs> you remember oh that, you remember that Afro Sheen. <laughs> oh my gosh, because he always would have plugged those products. All oh, right, yeah. all yeah. right, so here's the final, uh, going completely off topic. All right, uh -huh. now earlier you did a little Prince, but if, um, like if you grew up in the 80s, in the late 70s going to the 80s, you knew, especially in the 80s, there yeah. was a, a real R&B beef. People would argue who right. was better, Michael Jackson or Prince? So right. if the late Prince and Michael Jackson was on tour, oh, who headlines it and how does that conversation go? Oh, you wrong for that. You wrong for that. So so it's like we go, so we're gonna go go back backstage behind the scenes to see what the conversation is like. Right. So okay, and I know, okay. First, let me just do a disclaimer. We understand that on this show, you will not hear any profanity of any kind, but do not worry. Jay Lamont has his own three second delay because there's a chance you're going to hear so many words that you probably don't want to hear. Stand by. Please stand by. We're going backstage right now. Michael and Prince, they're backstage debating on who's going to headline. Let's listen. I don't care. Oh, wait, listen. I don't care what you say. I'll go last. I, no, no, you don't have to go last. I will go last. I don't have to go last. I don't care. I don't care what you're going to say. I don't give a damn. 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 I, I'm tuning up. Look, let me rehearse. Let me do what I gotta do. I don't care what you gotta do. I know we gotta do. And I think it's Jermaine, Jermaine, where are you? Jermaine, where are you? Okay. I don't need to be on this. That's that's what it's gonna be like right there. That's right. what it's gonna that's be them, like. That's them that's them arguing. See now now some people now look for those of you who are tuning in, uh who would you pick to headline if it was Prince and Michael Jackson on, on the show. We would love to see your comments, who y'all would think would be the better headliner, Prince or Michael Jackson, because that's always been a debate. But but Michael had this this uncanny ability as well. I mean, to, to like, it, it, was, it was soft and yeah. then that's all he did. What is he saying? I don't know. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. But you know what, Quincy? Quincy, I got to say this. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. The two of the greatest entertainers are no longer here, but yeah. I have to, I would have to say Michael, basically because, now this is just me saying this. I love, I'm a huge Prince fan. I remember when I last saw Prince. I mean, I, I everybody was screaming. I I found myself screaming like a white woman. I screamed like a white woman. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was shameful, but I had to. But Michael, you got to keep in mind, Michael has had that legacy ever since he was a kid. 
He started out with his family, the Jackson Five, can't forget the brothers, but it was Michael. And I know Prince came on the scene like around 78, 79. I remember this. I was in I was in the fifth grade when I Want to Be Your Lover came out. So yeah. if you want to go way back, soft and wet. I want to be your lover. You know, oh my God. Uh <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. but here's, here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it like this. Let's just say they do two shows. The first show, Mike, Michael headlines. The second show, the next show, Prince headlines. We'll just leave it. We'll just do it that way. Okay, cool. That's how we're going to do that. That's fair enough. That's fair you enough. Know. Well, look, um, let's go to a quick uh, break. So I'm going to drop you backstage. And when we come back, we'll finish up this, this interview. It's a lot of fun. My jaw is hurting, but I got some BC. So it feels, it feels a little bit better. I'm, I'm, right. doing, I'm doing you're going to a commercial break music. <laughs> yeah, I got we'll my, be right I, I, back. I, I, we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> uh, yo, th this is uh, it's a lot of fun. Real quick, so I said I had two uh, quarantine, I mean, not quarantine, but two cash prizes for you guys. We'll be right back with a little bit more, Jay. So the first uh, 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 trivia question is just kind of throwing it out there. Um, what date in August was my business anniversary? I've been in business uh, for 12, let me see, yes, for 12 years on this date in August. August just passed, it was Black Business Month. So the first person that puts in the correct date in August, okay, August what was the date of my uh, business anniversary when I started business over 12 years ago, okay? So that's the first uh, uh, trivia question. And the first right answer will get uh, uh, Cash App, $25, or PayPal, however you want it. It'll be contactless. We ain't writing no checks or nothing. So y'all just put out your answers. And the first one that I see that has the correct answer, I will announce it before the show is over with. And uh, while we are continuing on again, big shout out to my sponsor, uh, Angels Place Daycare Center. If you let them know that uh, you heard about uh, them from anything quality comedy, Quincy Carr, or anything, you will get $50 off the first four months okay, of your child care. Now, for parents out there, shout out to all the parents that's doing this virtual uh, learning and the school thing. Shout out to my wife. Uh, she, she uh, like my daughter started, our daughter started school today and my wife had to split her job and and the school work. So uh, it's going to be a lot of par parents that's going to be stressed out having to relearn calculus or whatever subject your child has got to take because we've got to kind of be the coach for the, uh, uh, the teacher. So, um, but yeah, uh, so big shout out to all the parents that are doing that. Um, and, uh, but yes, I was talking about child care. So just make sure that you guys uh, get your child care stuff taken care of, but let Angels Place Daycare know they are in the description. All you got to do is click the link to, to, to their Facebook page in the description. Tell them that Quincy Carr mentioned you or you heard about them on anything quality comedy or Quincy Carr and you'll get $50 off the first four months. That's a lot of good money. Okay. So remember that. And also, I uh, want you guys to also keep in mind about what's going on. Like, I also have my comedy special it is out right right now on TGXLive.com. Uh, um, it is pay-per-view. So they actually, uh, you know, invested some money in me. Uh, and now it's exclusively available on that platform. So big shout out to TGX Live, my man Arma, um, for for just investing that time in me. And it's only $4.99 for the pay-per-view. You you get that for 48 hours. It is awesome. Thank you for your support in advance. Uh, also, I have my T-shirts. I'm wearing one today. I strive to be perfect, but end up being human. Let's stop judging each other. Stop holding grudges, point fingers. We're all human. We all make mistakes. So if you're interested in one of those shirts, leave a comment and I'll hit you up. You got wristbands too. So you get a special deal if you do want to get that uh, to today. And then I got my other t-shirts. Come on, let's do something. If you saw my performance on True TV, you you like the bed and breakfast performance. And that's where that phrase came from. Come on, let's do something. All right. So I got some products here. If you guys are interested, all you got to do is just leave a comment. And uh, uh, only because you're viewing the show today, if you do want one of these shirts, for every shirt that you purchase, I'll throw in a free wristband that has the same exact message. Okay. So very simple. I appreciate you supporting me. And like I said, 
you know, my goal is just to push positivity. So uh, let's make sure that we do that. All right, let's bring Jay back in on the show. So, uh, Jay, uh, real quick, my man. You did, you did that um, good, man. That was good, man. <laughs> I was going to say, I want my baby back, baby, back, baby, back, baby. Back. <laughs> do oh, some commercials. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Five, eight, eight, two, <laughs> Empire. Call Empire today at Geico. At Geico, you'll get insurance for a low price. That's right. Call this today. A walking, you are a walking billboard. And speaking of billboards, yeah. you actually had a radio career before the comedy. And this was in the 90s, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually started out. Of, I was in college. Uh, that was my actually my major in college. I attended. Um, I attended Langston University in Oklahoma, HBCU. Go LU. Uh, yeah. So my first my first gig on radio was our college radio station. I was the like one of the hottest DJs, and uh, and then I worked in Oklahoma City. Worked in Houston. Had a chance yeah. to go to radio in Chicago, Detroit. Uh, I did some guest radio work in Dallas uh, for for a legendary DJ there. So yeah, that was like, and so that's where the Jam and Jay comes from. That was my DJ name, gotcha. Jam and Jay. Coming up next is Jam and Jay going to give you a chance to win those tickets. And if I were to get back on, that was me, that would be me. Come on, come on, let's go. Let's break it down right now. Non-stop, commercial free, 90, 90 minutes. Coming up next hour. Don't forget, we're going to have a special extravaganza. Don't forget this Friday night. Going to be broadcasting oh, wow. 9 until 2. Make sure you come on out. Quincy Carr is going to be out there. 107.5 <laughs> FM. It's your chance to win. Let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who is this? Okay, you know, that guy. This guy. Wow. So, so just, uh, I mean, just to let folks know, I mean, things don't just happen. Like you've been in the comedy business. I would probably say like, I've been in for 20 years. You've been in for about 25 minimum or more than that. Actually 28 years, 28, 28 years. years. Okay. And just like, and that includes your radio or the radio is separate from that 20. Well, you know what? Overall, let's just say 30 years. Let's just say 30 overall. Because 30 years. And the thing about it is that just like when you mentioned radio, I, w- I actually had three jobs at the same time during that mm-hmm. time. Quincy, I was on the radio. I was doing I was doing a side gigs as a comedian and I did club. I was a club DJ also. So I'm getting checks. I'm getting checks all points in between. A lot of people didn't know that I was a club DJ was singing in a band. On, live on the radio, and then I would do comedy shows, moonlighting. I was moonlighting at that time before I went yeah. comedy full time. So yeah, wow. Little well, well here, then, yeah, yeah. Well, then you got an opportunity on season six on America's Got Talent, and from what I saw, you were eliminated in the Vegas round, but the audition yeah. was never televised, and it's unknown yeah. as to whether you were buzzed or or what. So, what exactly happened? We know that you were uh, picked yeah. to go to the Vegas round. Well, let me tell you about that. It's, it's, it's funny because, you know, and there was a lot of confusion at the time because a lot of folks, a lot of folks at the time who knew that I was a singer. And it's, it was so funny because it's like, I remember I, when I called my mom and I said, mom, I'm going to I'm gonna be on America's Got Talent. And of course, she was so excited. She yeah. thought I was going on as a singer. And I said, no, I'm going on as a comedian. I'm going to do the co- comedic thing. I said, maybe the next time I'll come on as a singer. But what happened was, you know, they, they, they put you out on it, the first audition. And mm-hmm. you do your audition for a live audience. And we and we did that here in L.A., in downtown L.A. And mm-hmm. Quincy, when I tell you it was a packed house, I remember the, uh, the night. And, of course, Nick Cannon, who's a good friend, was hosting. And I did my master mix. That was my first audition. I did like a two-minute a two master mix. The crowd went nuts. Standing mm-hmm. ovation. And I'm trying to think, who were the judges? Uh, it was uh, Sharon Osbourne. I remember she was the judge. Right. Uh, Howie, Lo- Howie Mandel and uh, yep. Peter Morgan, the brother from uh, from London. Here's okay. British, yeah, and they were like, they were like, wondering, like, what's going on here? Because I think at first they didn't get it, but obviously the crowd got it. So I, I was, I had a chance to go to Vegas. I got three, three. It's like three stars, meaning you, you, you know, you go to the second round. Well, the second round, you know, a lot of times in, on shows like that, they throw a curveball at you, you know, mm-hmm. you know, because there was some, there were certain things that I wanted to do on the second round that I didn't get into, that I didn't get to do. So it's, 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 it was kind of tough right there because I was up against other contestants who had yeah. real, real good acts. And uh, it was funny. Uh, you know, it was a great experience, although I didn't win. But I feel like deep down inside, I didn't get a chance to show the talent that I wanted to show because, you know, because of the politics, you know, not to get not to tell everything. But the politics right. of both shows, you can't really do all that you want to do, especially on television, you know. But but overall, yeah, I had a I had another comic uh, I had another comic tell me the same thing about his his opportunity on Last Comic Standing, and yeah, it was yeah. it was the same thing. It's it's like what the viewers see is 
you know, people who make it and don't make it. But what goes right. on behind the scenes is production right. is like, OK, so we have to put this person good or not. We have to put right. this person in here because right. this is what's going to give us the levels. Of, and it's like, come yeah. on, man. So that's the politics yeah. of a lot. And, of and the thing is, they're, and what they're doing is at the same time, they're developing a story around you. You know, like right. they want to know about my family. Tell us about your father. I understand your father was this, your, you know, all this. So they want to add all of that in there because it's, it's like a story. But the thing is, is that, like I said, again, you're up against other folks. So it is a talent contest. And yeah. I try to make people know that, you know, America's Got Talent, Last Comic Standing, because I've been asked to be on that show. And at the time I said, nah, I don't want to I don't want to do no more competition shows. That was just my yeah. attitude. But I said I'll, when I was approached about doing America's Got Talent, I said, I'll give it a try. You know, although, like I said, the the. The downs, the downfall of it is that I didn't get to do what I wanted to do, you know, but the yeah. audition, what you didn't see was really what I wish they could have shown, you know, mm. but because of the musical stuff I was doing. A lot of that they could not show because of uh, because of copyright issues and everything. Even if I'm imitating a certain song with my mouth, really? that's, considered, that's considered copyright. So like if I if I'm on if I'm on a TV show and I do like salt and pepper, push it. No, that's considered sampling. So they would have to they would have to get publishing rights. They would have to get solidification from the publisher and the writer. Even now forget about forget about playing the track on a TV show. If I just yeah. play the song, that's that was the issue that I had with America's Got Talent. So a lot of my masterpieces I couldn't do. I had to actually write out to, I had to let the producers know what certain songs I was going to do. But the problem yeah. was I had to make sure that I I remembered the songs that I was going to do because I might have just kind of got distracted and go into some other song. Now, now, yeah. now there's a problem. They're like, why, why did you put that in there? That, that You didn't tell us you were going to do that song or whatever. So a yeah. lot of that happened backstage. I'm like, well, okay, you know, but hey. I yeah, just that's information. Do. As information, I don't think I would have ever assumed because yeah. yeah. I know like with certain TV shows, like even with the show that I'm on, um, yeah. there's a 10 second rule that you can use, you'll, 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 you'll get the ASCAP authorization for right. 10 seconds to use an authorized track. Right. But right. after that, then you'll get flagged, especially yeah. on social media. Yeah. So I didn't you know, know that on, yeah. on the award show. Now, keep in I mean, mind, uh, now, when on, I did, the uh, on the game show, when I did, uh, when I did Comic View back in the day, when I did BET's Comic View, Right. There, it wasn't it was it wasn't much of an issue back then when I did Comic View. I remember when I did Def Jam I, and I and I and I actually had a discussion. I had to meet with the producers because what they would do, they would meet with all the comics that were performing. And I remember mm -hmm. asking one of the producers, I said, now, look, you've seen because they, they've seen the tapes that we send in. I right. said, uh, is there going to be an issue with the stuff that I do? Because I do a lot of song impersonation. They say, oh, no, no, you're fine, Jay. If if we. But what they said was, if if we have to edit something out of what we can't use of your set, then we'll do that. You know, so that's when you have to sign a release form. So if they have to edit, you know, cut down some of your set, edit out some parts, you have to agree to that or whatever. So I said, no problem. But as time went on, it became a problem because there were other performers, not not like not not just myself, but there were other acts who were um, who were using material, especially if they were using a track. You know, yeah. of course, they had to get copyright. They had to get permission and all that stuff. And it became controversial. It, it became an issue. So it wow. got to the point where they said, don't know. I don't want anybody using any musical stuff. I remember the last time I went on Comic View. I never told this before, but I'm going to tell it. I went on Comic View. I believe this is when they filmed it here in L.A. And mm -hmm. they wanted me to come back on the show. At first, I didn't want to do it because it was too much. Too, it was too much controversy I had to deal with. Because I know if I don't do that master mix, I know my, my, my followers will hate to not see the stuff that I'm used to doing. But what, and a lot of them did not know that there was an issue with that because if I'm doing certain songs that they know, it is consider it's a situation where they have to get it solidified if it's going on broadcast television. Right. Well, I went on Comic View and did my material, you know, because they told me you're good, Jay. Go ahead, and do what you do. All of a sudden, the show that I did came on, but they cut me out and didn't tell me nothing. Wow. Didn't say nothing to me. So you can imagine how mad I was because I had told my family, I called my mother, hey, my show, my show is going to air this Thursday, mom. So make sure you yeah. tape it. I'm, okay, I'm going to tape it. And I remember my mother called me. She says, hey, I taped the show. You weren't on there. What happened? So, you know, so I mean. It, what it, was it, the first year that you did uh, co Comic View? Because you, you, you did uh, Comic View three times, right? I did it like three, probably three or four times. The uh -huh. first time, I don't know if you recall, the first season of Comic View was when they would go out on the road and they would find talent. Remember, they went around right. the country yeah. and they would show your tape on the show. 
you know, like, okay. like they'll say, hey, uh, coming up next, we're going to go live. Let's go live to Virginia. Check out this up comedian, Quincy Carr. And uh, let's go to Houston because I was in Houston at the time on the radio. Yeah. I was still doing radio when I got on Comic View. Uh, let's what check year, out. What year was that, that, that very first time, if you remember? That was, and I, and I think that was when DL, DL Hughley was hosting, ni 1992. That was 92. Wow. So, I was I was a sophomore. I'm trying to think how I was just, I think I was 25. I was 25. Yeah. 25 or 24. Yeah, I was real young. So, but like I said, it was a great moment for me. But they allowed me, at the time, they allowed me to let my hair down and do whatever. But like I said, as time went on, when I got on other shows, it had to, it, it came to a point where I had to have a meeting with the producer so I could mm -hmm. let them know, here's what I do in my act. Where, 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 where do I need to, you know, because my thing is, as long as you tell me what I need to cut out, I'll do it myself. I don't, you don't have to edit out. No, I'll do what I need to do. Okay. There's other stuff. There's other stuff that I can do in my act. I don't just do sound effects. That's what I tell people. I do. Right. I do have. I do have other material that I do. Right. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. You know. And and I can imagine how people would kind of kind of pigeonhole you into say, okay, well, this guy only does this, and so yeah. this is all we want to hire this person for. Because um, right. right. I've heard I've heard Jay Farrell kind of mimic those same things. Like I, I can do more than just impersonation. I can do stand up. I'm not right. just impersonation so so i can right. imagine how difficult that is now now during during this time um as we get ready to wrap this interview up man during this time it's been you know troubling times and difficult times for entertainers um mm -hmm. and it's been difficult for people of color and it's never has stopped being difficult for people of color especially if you're in the entertainment business but can you just give your thoughts on I mean, you've been living a while and you've seen some things um, back in the yeah. 70s and now to still see it now, what does that feel like for you? Well, no, not back in the 70s, Quincy. I wasn't born. I wasn't born until 82. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you straight line, man. You're trying to make me old now. I don't know where you went with that. So no, 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 no. But man, it's always been tough for us, man, for people that look yeah. like us. It's always been tough, you know. Uh, but I, like I said, there, and, and it was so, you know what's so funny, Quincy? There have been times I wanted to quit comedy. I really wanted to get out of comedy and just go back to getting a regular job. I was going to actually, I was going to stay on radio at the time when I first, when I think at the time I did Comic View, I think I did one season of Def Jam, you know, and like I was telling you earlier in the, in the, in the interview that I used to get hated on so much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, even even up to now, sometimes I get hated on because you got a lot of folks out there who will talk about you behind your back. I mean, that's always going to happen. You can't expect everybody to like what you do. And it's like I said, and I've always said this, it's bad enough when it's our own people who backstab us, you know, but I remember, I remember one time I said, you know what, I forget this. I don't want to do this uh, because there's been times I remember times I would be backstage getting ready to go on stage and you can hear the other comedians who I just met. You know, why, why they got him on the show? He, you know, he don't do nothing but do the sound effects. I mean, oh, he, I guess, I guess I'm going to have to say, if I got to do what you do, Jay, I used, I used to have to hear that all the time. I guess I might have to do them sound effects. And I, it, it got to the point to where I got frustrated, Quincy. I got sick of it. And I remember someone said to me, Jay, don't worry about them. Like I, like I told you earlier, I said, if they could do that, if they could do half of what you do, I bet you they'll be out there on stage doing it too. And I think, like I said, I think it bothered them. And, you know, and a lot of times I would always be booked on a show where they want me to headline the show. Now, now, now understand something. If somebody says to you, man, we're going to have you close the show. That may be considered a, a huge compliment because you're the star of the show. But I, but understand something. A lot of times you got to watch that because I've been put in situations where I've been on shows. You know where I'm going, Quincy. I have Seven been put times. on shows. Quincy, I've been on shows where I've, I, would, I would be sitting backstage like, why am I on this show? But then they'll say to me, we're going to let you go last. But a lot of times it's not because they like what you do. It's because they want to see you. They want you to fail. Right. They because now you get now you realize that okay, who am I up against? Who's going on before me? It could be somebody that's very, very raunchy or whatever. And, and there's no there's no criticism against nobody else on what they do. You know, but I've been I've been put in that situation where I may go up behind somebody who probably destroyed the whole show. Who I sometimes I think, you know what, that I think that person should have closed the show. And what would happen is once I go out there and they want me to headline, the crowd would turn. I mean, I you could tell the room would change. They yeah. they they weren't feeling me. You know, I remember one time and people always say, Jay, I can't imagine. I can't imagine you having a bad show. I said, well, I can. I said, you ain't been doing it. Look, look, I tell people all the time. If a comic ever says they haven't been booed or they haven't had a bad show, they are yeah. lying. You ain't yeah. been in the business long enough. 
Right. And, and I tell them all the time, I said, yeah, the reason you don't believe is because you weren't there. I said, I believe it because I was there. And, and sometimes you have to say to yourself, you know what? This was not the show I needed to be on. But it took but it took someone, Quincy, to tell me, you know, they said, Jay, don't feel bad about that. This is the, this is the way you got to look at it. Just say to yourself, you know what? This was not the crowd for my act. My act was not for that particular crowd. That's one crowd. And this next crowd, they're going to love you. J. Anthony Brown, you know who that is. Yeah. I remember J. Anthony Brown said to me something that has me laughing. Uh, and I have to say, shout out to J. Anthony Brown. I love him. He was one of the few brothers at the time that told me not to give up. He was trying to he encouraged me not to get out of comedy. But I told him, I said, Jay, I'm going to be fine. I got my radio job. Order. No, man, trust me, man. You got such a talent, man. People need to see what you do. And I remember he said to me, very, and he said it in, in the way that that no other nobody else could say it the way he said it. He straight up said, "Man, if people for those that don't like what you do, he used the f, you know, f them." Basically said, "Forget Same about." Same thing them. that Bernie Mac said in House Party Three, right. kid. If people don't like you for being right. yourself, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he did like that. <laughs> right, right. That's that was Jay Anthony. And so, but check this out. Something he said that had me thinking. He said. He said, he's, he said, man, I go through it all the time, Jay. He said, whenever you go out on stage, he said, let, let, let's, let's, he said, let me give an example. Let's say you go out on stage, there's 2,000 people out there. He mm -hmm. said, there's always going to be three or four people out of that 2,000 that ain't going to like nothing about your show, that ain't going to like nothing you did. He said, but guess what? Those 1,995, they had a wonderful time. He said, so F those five that didn't like you. Never mind them. But those 1,995, they loved you. He said, that's the way you got to look at it. I said, you know what? He's right. He's right. So, so he yes. said, don't worry about them. He said, and, and he even said, he said, man, I love watching what you do, man. I, he said, I can't do that stuff. I know I can't do that. But right. I guarantee, he said, if I can, if I could do it, I'd be out there doing it too. So hey, he was, man. yeah, that, yes. that, that is, um, that's a true testament to, yeah. to what it takes to be in the business and to also have a certain niche carved mm -hmm. out in the business. Yeah. Um, you know, like my, my issue is at times, um, like people know me to be a, a regular person, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't curse when I'm on platforms like this or me when too. I'm That's what I love about you. And I love and you for so that. So the my brand of quality in the comedy, some comics take that as well. Does that mean because I curse and ain't quality? I said I I, I never said that. You didn't what say I that. said was I had to carve out a niche. In my own lane, I didn't right. want to say clean comic. I didn't want to say church gospel. Comic. All those lanes are already taken. Exactly. And what you have done, you've carved out your own lane and hmm. what you do and what you do so well. And it's not very many, if any other uh, black comics that can do what you do on the level that you do it. And hmm. the, the best part about it, you talk about your radio career, your comedy career, all of that in your impersonations. You can sing. So oh, you got an album that you just dropped. So yep. let's talk about this before we get out of here, man. You got an album that you just dropped. Probably the first, well, I know Jamie Foxx did albums and he did his comedy, yeah. but but yeah. yours is transitional. So here I am, right? Yeah, so talk that's, about that real quick. Yeah, That's my latest, here I am is my latest EP. And like I said, that's just, that's a continuation of what I was doing before I got into comedy. And that's why I want to make, make clear of that because people don't know, because you know, so you got some people that'll say, oh, so you're singing now. And I said, no, I've always been singing. It's just that a lot of people didn't know that I was a real, that I'm a real singer because uh, I used to be in a group. But uh, this is my first solo project. It's my EP. And I have a single out called Celebrate which has been going, I mean, uh, this this has, this shocks me, Quincy. My song Celebrate was in the top 30 countdown over in the UK. And then it was at, it was at, it was in the top, I think it was at number 17 on another chart over in Europe. So okay. it's unbelievable that so many people know about the song over there. And here's what's crazy. I'm getting a lot of followers. Now I'm getting followers on my Instagram and Facebook from people over in the UK that heard my music that don't even know that I do comedy. Mm. Because when they look on my page and see all this comedy stuff, I, I have I have people hitting me up saying, oh, you do comedy too? I did yeah. not know that. And so now they're asking me, when are you coming to the UK to do a music show? That's and it's, that's just amazing. So I have two I have two identities. So so I'm excited about that. But I'm and plus I have a couple of stations here in the States that's playing my song Celebrate. But if anybody wants to get my EP, oh, they can go to yeah, yeah. So a couple of stations in the states is playing it. Uh, uh, a shout out to Will Downing. Uh, you know Will Downing, our good yeah. friend, who's who's done Jazz Legacy. Uh, Will Downing has a nationwide radio show he does each week called The Wind Down, 
And it was, I remember uh, Will, uh, I think, because I think there was one festival that I think, and I think you were there too. And I told Will, I said, Will, I got this song I got to let you hear. And he said, okay, let me hear it because he told me he has a show. So he heard Celebrate and was ecstatic. So he emailed me. He said, dude, he said, this is all you? Because I did all the I did all the writing and I, and also my my co producer Trey Balfour uh, co wrote it with me and he did the track. I said yeah man I'm doing all the vocals. So he said man I'm gonna play this send send me the track I'm gonna play this on my show and oh, that's what cool. and Will did. So I got to thank Will Downing and others who have, have supported my music and stuff. So but if anybody wants to get it they can go to iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, it's on SoundCloud, uh, Shazam, iHeart, and uh, Google Music Play. So check it out. Check look, and all and all people need to do, um, you know, is just look up Jam and Jay Lamont. That is your, um, as your handles where people can find you, Jam and Jay Lamont. Whether it's on Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram, you you're also yeah. on um, uh, what's that uh, site? Um, what about oh. people can get jobs? And they oh, always no. advertising jobs. Is, is it that vulgar website? I wasn't supposed to tell you. You weren't supposed to know that one. What's, no, no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> LinkedIn. You're on yeah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. You know um, about LinkedIn. Oh, you know yeah. it all, bro. Yep. And you also on Black Planet. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Now, now, ladies. Now, ladies. He didn't mean to say that. He didn't mean to say that, ladies. Because see, what, happened, what happened space. was the last lady I was talking to, she was all. Oh, she she stole all my money. She stole all my money. I ain't got no money. Oh, but yeah. I let them know too, uh, Quincy, that my website, if anybody wants to get my comedy DVD, because I've got some comedy DVDs I'm still okay. trying to sell, they can go to my website. It's thejaylamont.com, www.thejaylamont, thejaylamont.com. Because uh, we're broke. We're broke out here. You know, pandemic. Hey, man. You know, we, we are hanging in there the best way we can. Yeah. And, and real quick, before I let you go, I got to ask the audience, uh, I got to look and see. So the first. Uh, the first trivia question was, I'm not sure if anybody got it, but it was what date uh, I've been in business for 20. Um, I've been in business for 12 years, uh, mm -hmm. started business in 2008. What date is my business anniversary date in the month of August? I don't think anyone has gotten it yet. That's for the yet. first one. Uh, somebody is really close. Somebody who put up a number is like one number off. So I ain't going to say that. Whoever that is, just, just put just go a number up or one number down. Um, you, can give uh, me the, you can give me the money. I got the answer. Just give me the money. No, no, <laughs> no, sir. no sir. I'm not giving you any money. And the next one, the next uh, trivia question is what date, and this one may be easier because he just said it, what date, uh, not date, I'm sorry, what year was his very first appearance on BET's Comic View? That's for the other $25. So if you know that, the first person to put that answer in, what year did Jay, the Jam and Jay Lamont perform the very first time on BT's Comic View? What year did Jam and Jay Lamont perform on BT's Comic View? So before this live ends, if anybody gets it right, then I will get you that information. Um, and it looks like, yeah, it looks like we got our first person. Uh, yeah, homegirl, un thank, and I don't even know if I say it right, but I know it's Miss Maxwell. But on Yale, she she got 92, oh, yeah, 1990. yeah. Oh, that's, what, that's her name, on Yale, on Yale, I believe. Un -Yale. You see it, on un Yale, on Yale, Maxwell. Yeah, I know, I know who she is, but thank you very much, Unyel. Uh, yes, uh, 1992 was the very first performance of Jay uh, being on BT's Comic View, uh, and uh, it looks like Roxanne. She's actually my stylist. And what's interesting about Roxanne, uh, Jay, Roxanne has a tie to Patty Labelle as well. I think she's uh, she's a stylist for Patty Labelle's new. New boyfriend or new young guy oh. that she's with. So oh. and she's, yeah, Roxanne is my stylist as well. So but con congratulations, oh. Roxanne. You got the first uh question that I asked. Uh, the, right. uh August the 21st is my first um, is my anniversary date of my business. So I will send awesome. both of y'all some cash. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, Come yep, on. yep. So, um, any any last words, man? Before you get out of here, man, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. I certainly appreciate you taking time out your schedule to even do 
do the show with me, man. Man, I appreciate it. Quincy, can I ask, is it okay if I can give out my cash app? Is it all right? Is it, you have a problem with yeah. that? Or? Yeah, oh. I mean, you, you see, I got my cash app. Is up oh, there. Oh, oh, bless your soul. Bless your soul. <laughs> so if anybody would like to like to send a cash app, you know, during this pandemic, a lot of us in the entertainment business are having challenges because we're not able to work, but we're doing what we can to make ends meet. But if you'd like to uh, hit me up with something on my cash app, it's dollar sign human iPod. Uh, dollar sign H U M A N I P O D dollar sign human iPod. So I appreciate human it. iPod. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Like you, you are a breath of fresh air just to talk to and chit chat with. And, um, it's like I said, I appreciate you being a part of the show. Yep. This is this cash app right there up there on the screen. People like if you yeah. were entertained tonight, um, even if you don't cash app them, you, Try to get one of his CDs and or cop his album. Go to iTunes, look this brother up and support him. He is what you call a triple threat in this entertainment industry. Wait a minute, hold on, question. <laughs> Somebody just cash at me. Uh, 10, oh, cents. Ten cents. That's a shame. Oh no, I think that was cash up uh, saying this is what uh, we taken from yeah. every. <laughs> Ain't that about you know? That's a shame. They're gonna take your money. Take take a fee so they can make their money by taking your money. Ain't that a shame? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. They definitely will. But uh, yeah, um, thank you, my man. I certainly appreciate you being on the show. And we'll definitely connect once again, whether you're down here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Roxanne, it says it's her drummer. Oh, OK. OK. And I think I've met I met two of, the, you know, not all the band members, but two of the people that play with Patty. So, yeah, uh -huh. I may I may I may know who she's talking about. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hey, so Roxanne. She's yeah, she's she's uh, his stylist and she's definitely my stylist to keep me looking fresh. So oh, that was pretty cool, cool today. Um, and if y'all yeah. ever get a chance to connect, definitely connect with Roxanne if you want to look right when you come down here. Yeah. Quincy, can I say, man, I'm very proud of you, man. I am very, very proud of you, man. You are really doing this, man. When I first heard that you were doing this, that you got this platform here, man, I said, that's what I'm talking about. That's Thank what I'm talking about. Because I remember when I first met you, like I said, when we first met when we did the Jazz Legacy. I, yeah. I, the thing I loved about you, man, was your spirit. You have such a wonderful spirit. A, a great, just great conversation, man. And I said, okay, I like this brother right here. So I am very proud of you, man. Keep it up. And I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. I hate I'm not going to see you this year, but we're going to hook up soon. Absolutely. Well, we're under the same uh, um, um, talent agency. So, yeah. you know, yeah. if we don't get booked somewhere else together, somebody will put us together. So no doubt. it's all no doubt. it's all good to me. I'm just I'm just glad to be a peer of yours, homie. So you yeah, are definitely perfect. a legend here in the comedy and in the entertainment business. And we certainly appreciate you, man. Thank you, brother. Much love to you, man. Absolutely, man. You you, you be safe. All right. Y'all too. Stay safe. Yeah. All right, folks, thank y'all again for tuning in. Once again, y'all congratulate Roxanne Smith. She got the quarantine cash uh, by getting the date of my anniversary date, August the 21st. Um, and also, Unyel, Unyel, I think I said it right, Maxwell, she got uh, um, 1992 was the very first uh, time, in well, the very first year that uh, Jay was on BT's comic view. So I will send y'all some cash after this. And again, y'all tune in next week. I got another special guest and thank y'all for taking y'all Tuesday time out to uh, spend some quality comedy time with me. Hey, y'all remember this message. If you're interested in any of my products, I strive to be perfect, but end up being human. Okay. It's my message here. If you want a shirt, you're going to get a free wristband with it just for supporting the shirt and for being a part of this, uh, broadcast tonight i'm gonna go eat and plus my daughter's gotta get ready to go to school so um re remember next week and probably through the school year or well through the rest of this year uh the shows may start at 7 30 eastern standard time so it may start 30 minutes early so we can get out of here a little bit faster and i don't keep her up being so loud at night while she's trying to go to sleep for school virtual school anyway people i am out i will catch y'all next week deuces <laughs>